Hello, welcome back. Today I want to share with you a really interesting discovery by the University of Birmingham in collaboration with MIT, where they have discovered a black hole gobbling up a nearby star in a galaxy halfway across the universe. And in the process of this, of this gobbling up, so to speak, of this, uh, this star spiraling into a black hole, a powerful jet of X-rays and matter is shooting out and away from the black hole, and the way it's lined up is directly on an axis pointed at Earth, all right? So what I want to do is talk about this, why it's a really rare event, a little more detail about what they actually discovered, go over some of their data, and I want to show you where in the sky this thing is actually located because I think it's really interesting. Now, first things first, let's get some basic facts out of the way. The name of the signal is actually AT2022CMC, and it was discovered earlier this year by a facility named the Zwicky Transient Facility, which is an optical facility in California. So this telescope looks at a portion of the sky in the optical wavelengths, and when it detects something, then, then they of course notified other observatories who looked at the same patch of sky and noticed a very, very, very bright source of X-rays, very likely from a jet of matter streaking out from a supermassive black hole at the speed of light. The reason they think there's a supermassive black hole involved is because the brightness of these x-rays is much, much, much brighter. And also the source is much, much, much farther away than other similar uh, observations that we've made in the universe. Now what they're calling this is a tidal disruption event, TDE. So if you see TDE in the literature, it means tidal disruption event. The reason it's uh, called this is because the only way that we can reconcile the brightness of the source with the distance that it is, uh, as far as how far away it is, is by a passing star coming near a black hole and essentially getting caught in the gravitational influence of the black hole. Once it gets close enough to the black hole, it begins to be torn apart and spirals in to the black hole. Now this is the brightest TDE, tidal disruption event, that we've ever seen, and it's also the farthest, the most distant one that we've ever seen. The distance of this thing is eight and a half billion light years away. Now I need to call your attention to how incredible that number is because for us to see anything that far away is already a feat and kind of amazing, but for something this bright to be that far away is honestly just crazy. Consider that the galaxy, our galaxy, is only around 100,000 light years across, and this thing is eight and a half billion light years away. It's just basically unfathomable amounts of distances is what it is. Uh, because if you consider the speed of light is so fast that it can circle around the planet, planet Earth, seven times in one second. You know, so in one second, the speed of light circles the entire planet seven times, right? But our galaxy is 100,000 light years across. That's uh, uh, the distance it would take light to, would go in 100,000 years. And this object is eight and a half billion light years away. So not only can we see it, but it's the brightest tidal disruption event that we've ever seen in the X-ray. So the, re the only way that we can reconcile these two things, how could this be, is it's probably being powered by a supermassive black hole. That's the only thing that could generate that much energy. And also it's probably pointed, the axis of the jet is probably pointed directly at the Earth and that's why we can see it so brightly. So once they started observing these things, uh, the, the, this uh, observation, the first thing they really looked at is try to look at the absorption spectra from the object. So the light coming out of it is uh, passes through interstellar gas and gas in the galaxy, and we can see where the absorption lines are in the spectrum. And we can see how they're shifted, and the, the red shift tells us basically how far away the object is. Uh, and so by knowing how much it's shifted, we can estimate how far away it is. Eight and a half billion light years away is the number they came up with in the research. So when they initially discovered it, they thought it was a very nearby object that was just bright. But then when they looked at the red shifting and saw how far away it is, they're like, what could possibly cause this much energy? And so the only model that we have when you run through the calculations of what could generate as much energy as they detected is a black hole tearing apart a star and the X-ray jet uh, or the matter and X-ray jet coming from that being lined up directly with the Earth. Now, when the jet is lined up directly with the Earth, it's actually, it actually has a term. It's called Doppler boosting, and that's why it appears so bright to us, of course. Um, the first three days after the initial observation, uh, it looked pretty normal, and then uh, after they looked at it with the X-ray telescope, they saw a brightness much, much brighter than uh, most recorded gamma ray bursts, and certainly the farthest distance uh, uh, observation of this type that we've ever seen. 
So I'll talk a little bit about gamma ray bursts because this definitely falls in that family. Gamma ray bursts are extremely energetic events. We're talking about thousands of suns of energy coming out in a few seconds, essentially. And they're very, very bright in the gamma rays and then after they subside in the x-rays and the optical usually as well. But usually gamma ray bursts are theorized to be a collapsing star, like when a star maybe collapses to form a black hole. That process can, can generate a lot of gamma rays and, and cause a very high energy burst of gamma rays. We call it a gamma ray burst. But this thing is actually brighter than a, than a gamma ray bur burst. It's honestly completely in, unfathomable how bright it is. And I'll show you the data in a few minutes. And so that's why they theorize that a black hole is actually what is uh, causing it rather than just the collapse of a star. So a passing star getting caught in the black hole's gravity, being ripped apart, the matter falling into the black hole, and through a process that we don't totally understand theoretically, that compression of matter generates a jet of, of a very high energy matter streaming out of the into the interstellar medium. When the matter hits the interstellar gas, it generates gamma rays and x-rays, which we see as a jet streaming away from the object. In this case, we think it's a black hole. And based on the brightness of the object, the best calculations say it's probably, the black hole is probably swallowing uh, that nearby star at a rate of half of the mass of our sun per year. So that's how much matter is falling in and causing these jets to be generated pointed at the Earth. So what I'd like to do now is show you, here's an artist uh, representation of what's going on. You have a black hole in the center, you have some star that's spiraling in, and through, again, a process we don't totally understand, this compression of matter as it gets ripped apart and goes into the black hole, generates these jets that go out along uh, uh, the spin axis of the black hole. So we can see some animation here. There's a black hole in the center. You can't really see it because it's black, but as the star gets close to it, it gets slowly ripped apart and the uh, matter from the star kind of whirlpools into the galaxy, into the uh, black hole. And as that happens, there's, again, some physics we don't totally understand, some compression of the matter, which then eventually when it reaches a critical threshold after enough of it falls into the black hole, it generates a jet of matter, uh, again, along the spin axis of the black hole. So what we're seeing is this jet edge on uh, as it uh, goes towards the Earth there. Now here is a different jet, not the same one that we're observing here, but uh, this was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. You can see a star here, but there's theorized that there could be a black hole here as well doing a similar sort of thing. And here we can actually sort of see the jet as, as it races away from the object. It impacts the stellar medium, and then we can see, see the jet there. Now what we're looking at in this observation is we're looking at this jet edge on straight towards the Earth. Now the next thing I'd like to do is show you where this thing is in the sky. So I live in the northern hemisphere, so this is what the sky looks like for me. So here is north over here. Here's the north star over here. I'll put the north north here. So if you go, go look uh, uh, to the north direction, you can see the north star. You can see the Big Dipper pointing towards the north star. This star is the north star. And if you kind of go towards the east direction of here, you will see a constellation named Booties right here. So it looks like a little, like kind of like a kite right here. The coordinates of this object lie between this constellation uh, here and Booty. So right in this region where I'm zooming in is where this gamma ray burst is. Now over here, this M3, this is a globular cluster. That's not at all related to what it is here, but right in between these two constellations is where this gamma ray burst is actually coming from. So as I said, this research was published in the journal Nature Astronomy, Astronomy and uh, you can see the title here, The Birth of a Relativistic Jet Following the Disruption of a Star by Cosmological Black Hole. Basically what we've been saying is that a relativistic jet is a jet of uh, a very high energy matter coming from a black hole as a star falls into it. I want to show you the data they collected. All right, so here is like the first main figure in the paper, and I want to show you this here. Um, what we basically have is, this is the x-ray data here, and on the bottom, all of these gray dots down here are all uh, other gamma ray bursts that we've seen uh, afterglows from gamma ray bursts. So after we start to see it in the x-ray, we see this is all the different gamma ray bursts uh, or similar types that we've seen. Now the data from this observation you can see is much, much higher energy. So you have high uh, energy on the y-axis and you have time uh, here uh, on the x-axis. So here is 10 days later right over here. So you can see as time goes on the intensity of the event has subsided, but as you look at it, it's always more energetic than these other gamma ray bursts that we've seen down below. Now I'm going to call your attention to these smaller little inset charts 
uh, up here on the right because these are interesting. So what you have here is this is sort of showing what it looks like several hours and several days later. So you can see the uh, energy, energy coming down over a period here 70 hours later. So a couple of days later, it's starting to come down. Uh, when you start to look 140 hours later, it starts to like level off. But interestingly, when you look, uh, here's 500 hours later, so a number of days later, you can see that the intensity popped up very, very bright and then went back down again. So these events are not static events. They're very cataclysmic events and quite unstable. The next chart I want to show you is basically a chart of this observation in different wavelengths. So what we have in the black here is the x-ray data that we sort of showed on the previous chart here. But overlaid onto that, we have the optical data uh, here by the optical instruments. And also we have radio frequencies up here. And all the little different symbols like triangles and squares and things are just different facilities taking the data. So you can see that the event started again on the ground by, with an optical observation. We have a lot of optical data taken by ground-based telescopes. Then we have the x-ray data once we had the x-ray instruments and the radio instruments on there. So you can see that other than the radio, in general, the intensity is going down over time, the exception again being radio. But the event, again, is much more energetic than previous gamma ray bursts, again, probably because we're looking directly at it edge on or towards the, the actual axis of the jet. I thought I'd show you quickly how this in, how this was actually detected. This is the Zwicky Transient Facility we talked about here. So here are other instruments, uh, and then here we have the Zwicky Transient showing its field of view. 47 square degrees, very wide field of view. Here's a, a galaxy here, Andromeda Galaxy for scale, so you can kind of see how much of the sky it can see at any given time. Here is the actual detector itself. Uh, a couple of pictures of the detector itself mounted in the telescope that uh, on the ground there. And you can sort of see the size of the detector right here as well. So it's easy to get sensationalist with titles like this, right? X-ray burst aimed straight at our Earth, you know, damage and destruction coming in. That, that's not the point of this. This object is eight and a half billion light years away. It's literally halfway across the universe. Halfway across the universe we can see, okay? But it is so bright that it's brighter than any other gamma ray burst that we've ever seen. And it's farther away than any of them that we've ever seen. So from a physics point of view, from an understanding our universe point of view, that's really, really interesting. Also, to have one of these things lined up so that the black hole is shooting the jet uh, directly at us is really, really neat as well. The last thing I want to leave you with is sort of a cartoon here. You have the black hole, you have the stellar debris coming into the black hole, the jet of matter, uh, matter essentially coming out of the pole of the black hole through some interaction we don't totally understand. As this matter hits the interstellar medium, that's where the radio and the x-rays are all generated. The synchrotron radiation here, this is radiation generated by a relativistic jet of matter impacting essentially a stationary uh, a bit of, addition of uh, like interstellar gas. And so that's, that's, a, that's the name of that radiation from a relativistic jet, from a shock, uh, basically impacting additional uh, matter uh, uh, in the interstellar medium. And then, of course, we see the radiation with our ground-based telescopes along the axis of the jet. So I hope you find this interesting. I tried to show you where it is in the sky because personally I dislike it when I read about galaxies or this and that and then you never really know where it is. I want to go outside and say, oh, that, that gamma ray jet, that gamma ray burst or that galaxy or that black hole is over there. Even I can't see it, I can at least make it real by looking at it in the sky and seeing generally where it is. So as time goes on, I'll try to bring you more updates about the further observations of this. Follow me on into the future as we learn together about the new discoveries coming from our universe.